Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're going a lot more technical than we normally would, but I thought this was the perfect context. It can feel after experiencing something like ChatGPT for the first time that the mysteries of the universe have actually been unlocked. This revelatory experience is, I believe, why so many people have shifted so much attention to the generative AI space over the last six months. However, as a recent paper points out, there are still a huge, huge array of problems that remain unsolved when it comes to building LLMs. In fact, to read this paper, one gets the impression that we might still be barely scratching the surface of how these large language models can be built and scaled for maximum impact. So what we're going to do today is a whistle-stop tour through this paper, which is called Challenges and Applications of Large Language Models, and involves contributions from researchers at the University College London, the University of Cambridge, Meta AI, Stability AI, and other organizations as well. The abstract reads, Large language models went from non-existent to ubiquitous in the machine learning discourse within a few years. Due to the fast pace of the field, it is difficult to identify the remaining challenges and already fruitful application areas. In this paper, we aim to establish a systematic set of open problems and application successes such that ML researchers can comprehend the field's current state more quickly and become productive. This was published about three weeks ago, so is fairly up to date. The way that they organize their challenges are into three categories, design, behavior, and science. Some challenges fit in multiple areas, such as high pre-training costs being both a design challenge as well as a science challenge. We're going to start with some of the challenges that might be the most familiar to the average listener, and then move into some of the ones that might not be as familiar. Let's start with hallucinations. The paper writes, The popularity of services like ChatGPT suggests that LLMs are increasingly used for everyday question answering. As a result, the factual accuracy of these models has become more significant. Unfortunately, LLMs often suffer from hallucinations, which contain inaccurate information that can be hard to detect due to the text fluency. Now, the paper points out that there are actually different types of hallucinations. They distinguish between intrinsic hallucinations, where the generated text logically contradicts the source content, and extrinsic hallucinations, where one cannot verify the output correctness from the provided source, because the source content does not provide enough information to assess the output. So as they do with most sections, the researchers try to catalog efforts that are being made to solve these challenges. When it comes to hallucinations, one of the things that they point out is that there are efforts to better measure hallucinations and to try to provide a framework that makes understanding improvement when it comes to hallucinations a bit more measurable. Now, the two big categories of strategies to solve hallucinations that they point to, notably without changing the model architecture itself, are one, retrieval augmentation or supplying the LLM with relevant sources, and two, decoding strategies. In each case, the paper points to a variety of different works in those areas. Next, let's turn to another well-known challenge, limited context length. The paper writes, Addressing everyday natural language processing tasks often necessitates an understanding of a broader context. For example, if the task at hand is discerning the sentiment in a passage from a novel or a segment of an academic paper, it is not sufficient to merely analyze a few words or sentences in isolation. The entirety of the input or context, which might encompass the whole section or even the complete document, must be considered. Similarly, in a meeting transcript, the interpretation of a particular comment could pivot between sarcasm and seriousness, depending on the prior discussion in the meeting. Now, for anyone who has tried to use ChatGPT for something that involves a longer document than their context window can handle, you'll understand this particular challenge. It's one of the reasons that people got so excited earlier this year, when in May, Anthropic announced that Claude would be moving to a 100k context window. However, as the researchers point out, they find that, quote, while commercial closed API models often fulfill their promise, many open source models, despite claiming to perform well with longer contexts, exhibit severe performance degradation. Basically, what the researchers point out is that there's a difference between being able to technically deal with long inputs versus performing well with long inputs. The researchers then point to three efforts around context length, including efficient attention mechanisms, length generalization, and even transformer alternatives as ways to address this issue. I think the transformer alternative section serves as a good reminder of just how much things that seem known today are actually highly dynamic. The researchers write, while transformers are the dominant paradigm in LLMs today due to their strong performance, several more efficient alternative architectures exist. Another challenge they identify that is familiar to most of us is misaligned behavior. They write, the alignment problem refers to the challenge of ensuring that the LLM's behavior aligns with human values, objectives, and expectations, and that it does not cause unintended or undesirable harms or consequences. 
The researchers write that most of the existing alignment work can be characterized into either methods for detecting misaligned behavior, such as model evaluation and auditing, mechanistic interpretability or red teaming, or methods for aligning model behavior, such as pre-training with human feedback, instruction fine-tuning, or RLHF. Now, regular listeners of this show will know that this is a huge area of development, so much so that, again, Anthropic was also able to make news when they announced a very different approach to the alignment issue with their constitutional model. Anthropic is basically trying to challenge the paradigm of human feedback models, arguing that they have some real problems, including scalability, of course, as well as requiring people to interact with disturbing outputs. Now, this is far from just a theoretical problem. Just about a week ago, The Guardian published an article called Kenyan Moderators Decry Toll of Training of AI Models. Quote, it destroyed me completely. Employees describe the psychological trauma of reading and viewing graphic content. Plus, they point out low pay and abrupt dismissals. Now, the purpose of this video obviously isn't to get into what constitutional AI does differently, but more to point out that this is hardly a solved area, and that there is a lot of innovation in how people think about addressing this set of problems. But let's move more quickly through some of the other challenges which are perhaps a little bit less familiar. Outdated knowledge. As the researchers point out, factual information learned during pre-training can contain inaccuracies or become outdated with time. For instance, it might not account for changes in political leadership. However, retraining the model with updated pre-training data is expensive, and trying to unlearn old facts and learn new ones during fine-tuning is non-trivial. The efforts that they point out trying to address this include modifying model parameters, preserving model parameters, and retrieval augmented language modeling. Another challenge they point out are unfathomable data sets. And this is just a fancy way of saying that because these data sets are so huge, they're much bigger than the number of documents that human teams can manual quality check. That creates a number of problems. Near duplicates in the training data set which degrade model performance, personally identifiable information that sneaks in and gets really hard to extract, and then there's things like pre-training domain mixtures, basically trying to get the right combination of information from different sources to produce the best results. In a world where there's such a huge volume of documents that these models are being trained on, humans simply can't quality check at all. Tokenizer reliance is another really fundamental challenge, core to how these LLMs have been designed. Tokenization, they write, is the process of breaking a sequence of words or characters into smaller units called tokens, such that they can be fed into the model. However, as they point out, this introduces computational overhead, language dependence, low levels of human interpretability, and problematic linguistic variants. Simply put, the number of tokens needed to convey the same information can vary greatly across languages, which is something that has to be accounted for when it comes to API pricing policy so that certain languages aren't unfairly costed higher. Another perhaps slightly more familiar problem is high pre-training costs. As the researchers write, the vast majority of the training costs go towards the pre-training process. Training a single LLM can require hundreds of thousands of compute hours, which in turn cost millions of dollars and consume energy amounts equivalent to that used by several typical U.S. families annually. Now, one of the big issues with these high pre-training costs is that it creates a situation where state-of-the-art results are, as the researchers write, essentially bought by spending massive computational resources. There are diminishing returns to how much more power can be thrown at these things, and so the risk is that it creates a set of haves and have-nots when it comes to who has access to the most advanced models, or more specifically, who has the ability to build the most advanced models. And to give you a sense of just how important this issue is, the recently announced Create AI Act, or Creating Resources for Every American to Experiment with Artificial Intelligence Act of 2023, explicitly establishes the National Artificial Intelligence Research Resource, which is a shared national research infrastructure that is designed to provide AI researchers and students from backgrounds that aren't Meta or Google the tools that they need to be able to experiment with the state of the art. Now, there are just a ton of additional problems that they identify here. High inference latency, which is a fancy way of saying that results are too slow. Prompt brittleness, which is something that anyone who has had to learn prompt engineering in order to figure out weird tweaks to get the model to perform what they want can understand. As the researchers define it, variations of the prompt syntax, often occurring in ways unintuitive to humans, can result in dramatic output changes. Another big problem is the indistinguishability between generated and human-written texts. Right now, for all the talk of AI detectors, there isn't a universally agreed-upon solution. The paper talks about post-hoc detectors and watermarking and other strategies, but it's still a real challenge and one that has big political resonance. Now, importantly, in addition to just identifying the challenges in general, the paper also discusses about how they come to bear in specific applications. For example, when it comes to chatbots, an issue is maintaining coherence. Multi-turn interactions, they write, 
make chatbots easily quote-unquote forget earlier parts of the conversation or repeat themselves. That whole issue with limited context window isn't just a problem for people who are trying to read long financial reports. The researchers point out that the largest genomes have vastly longer DNA sequences than existing genomic LLMs context windows can handle, constraining the types of genomes that can be successfully modeled using these approaches. Of course, there are issues of bias, where the unbalanced views and opinions that show up in the training data end up skewing the LLMs towards biased human behaviors as well. And so again, the point here in this 72-page research paper is to firstly remind us just how much work there still is to be done when it comes to improving large language models. We're talking about dozens and dozens of different domains, each of which has huge numbers of research teams specifically focused on those issues. But what about for us lay people, people who aren't involved in the solving of these challenges? I believe that we are going to be increasingly asked to make policy based not just upon what exists now, but what might exist in the future. Given that, understanding exactly where LLM's limitations and challenges lie feels incredibly important. I think having all of this in one space available for people to have as a jumping off point is also an incredibly useful resource. I will obviously include a link in the show notes so that you can go look at this paper yourself. And I hope this gave you just a little bit of a different sense of how much work there really is in front of us for the entire space around LLMs. Thanks as always for hanging out with the AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.